so uh, we can do um, introductions. And uh, while we do a quick round of introductions, and if that's okay, Hannah, and then people can add on their master plan updates um, if they want after that. Would that be okay to get the names all around? Great, thank you. So I'll start. My name is George Tolumsis. I'm the planning board representative to this committee, um, the vice chair of the committee, and per the delegation of the chair, I am facilitating the meeting. And I'll go next to you, Hannah. Thank you. Um, I think I have a little bit of a delay, so sorry if this sounds weird. Um, I'm Hannah Rechtschaffen. I'm chair and member at large. Thank you. I can just, uh, I'll just call off people as I see them. Kim? Now I'll go to MJ after that. Kim, can you hear? You're muted. I'm asking you to in introduce yourself in your role. I am muted, yes. Kim Boas, member at large. Thank you. MJ, then we'll go to Carol. Yeah, MJ Adams, uh, Director of Community and Economic Development for the City of Greenfield. Thank you. Carol Collins, Carol. Director of Energy and Sustainability for the City of Greenfield. Thank you. Then Nancy and then Jonah. Uh, Nancy Hazard, a member at large. Um, and then, uh, go, please Jonah, go ahead. Jonah Keene, member at large. I'm a, I'm a bit under the weather, so I may hop in and out of being visually present. Okay. Uh, thanks. Sorry to hear you're not feeling well. Um, uh, is Marlo here? I don't Let's see him. Okay, uh, Greta and then Phil. Hi, Greta Schwachman, Food Service Director for the schools. And I think that you never clear on this word representative or what? <laughs> <What's> the, <laughs> representing the youth. <laughs> nice. And I'm Thank Phil Upper, uh, representing the beleaguered city council. <laughs> okay, I think that's all the members of the uh committee that are present uh and Kristen, did you want to introduce yourself in your role sure Kristen LaPlante, grant program assistant greenfield community development with mj and anna thank you and anna you want to introduce yourself yes please, I was gonna... oh sorry I didn't Hi, know. <laughs> i'm anna oltman i'm the new community development administrator for the city of greenfield Excellent. Thank you and welcome. And I don't know if there's anyone else who might choose. To, I'm not seeing anybody else. Uh, sure. so, great. So, uh, oh, Tracy, Tracy, Allen, and Marlo are absent. Well, Marlo isn't here at this point. I don't know if anyone had heard from him. Um, I believe Tracy is no longer a member of the committee. Is that oh, right, yeah. Anna? That is right, yeah, she uh, resigned due to personal reasons. Got it, okay. thank you. Thanks. And Marlo, I think is coming. I didn't hear from okay. him otherwise. Thanks. So are there any uh, updates, kind of a popcorn thing, uh, any updates people have? I was just gonna, to... oh. I'm, I just gonna, uh, there was a water main break uh, on uh, Main Street on the Mohawk Trail today. And I know Marlo was dealing with that this afternoon, so. Uh, that would take precedence. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Thanks. Other than that, are there any <laughs> updates related to the uh, master plan that people want to share? And uh, jump, if I don't see you because there's two screens here, please jump in. I'm looking for hands. Anybody have anything they want to share? Uh, yes, MJ. <laughs> As you know, um, we launched uh, the first public workshop on the downtown revitalization plan last Thursday night. Very well attended. We had close to 50 people there. Um, it went really well, even though we had some technical difficulties. If you'd like to see the full recording, it's on my website, along with the PowerPoint presentation, which wasn't very long and you've seen it before. It's the walk down Main Street. But there's also a slide with a timeline from our consultant, Emily, who was working with us. We've launched the community survey, and I would encourage all of you to take it. Um, it is uh, on our website, but it's also in the window at Wilson's. Uh, and it's 
there's boards that are going to be around the community. There's one that's going to be in the YMCA. We'll be at the um, Winter Carnival uh, with some boards, really trying to get some input from the users of downtown who might not uh, frequent these meetings that uh, are usually very well attended. And we're really excited about that. Um, the second thing I'll say is, is that next Tuesday evening at 5.30, there's a meeting on the parking management study. We know that as we talk about the Main Street um, Improvement Program, that there's been some concern about how that might impact uh, parking, both the layout and the, the, the number of spaces that we have and where they're located. So we have uh, Stantec uh, consultants coming on, well, they're already on board from funded with a Massachusetts Downtown Initiative Grant. And they're going to do a presentation on that, on the plan for doing a parking management study. Uh, we decided last week that we're actually going to do some real time uh, data collection. So that's not going to happen probably till May. Uh, Christian from my staff has been volunteered to be a, 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 a parking space counter. Uh, and, uh, but that we feel like that will give us very good data and we'll be looking to have information on that probably around the end of June. And then the third piece. Uh, will be the Main Street Improvement Plan Workshop, the first workshop to talk about the uh, Coleraine Street to High Street uh, roadway layout. And that is happening on February 9th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the John Zahn Center. And that will be an in-person meeting, as will our parking meeting uh, also. So those all sort of tie into uh, Sustainable Greenfield because we're trying to do what Sustainable Greenfield suggested the community might be interested in seeing happen. Can I ask one, um, mention one detail, MJ, you mentioned about the survey, about the deadline for the survey. <laughs> oh, you want to know, the deadline, I think is February 5th. I just wanted to, so that would be out there as well. Sure. If sure. people want to participate. And Thanks. MJ, for the minutes, what is the subject of the February 9th meeting? The February 9th meeting is when Fuss and O'Neill, the uh, engineers for the Main Street Improvement Program, will be doing their first community workshop on the Main Street Improvement Program, which is the roadway conversation that uh, is looking at the space, the, the roadway from um, Coal Rain Street, actually 100 feet east of Coal Rain Street to the High Street intersection. Thanks. Is there, thank you, MJ. Is there anybody else who has a master plan related update? I'm flipping back and forth between screens to see if I see any hands. Uh, seeing none, it's okay to move on. Um, second agenda item is approval of the December meeting minutes. Do we have a motion to approve? Move approval. And a second. 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 Discussion. Thank you, Kim. Uh, discussion, Nancy? Uh, yes, there was a, a thing that um, talked about the possibility of using a whiteboard. And both Hannah and Christian said that they would be interested in looking into it. Seemed like that would be a useful thing to have in the minutes. Wasn't that mentioned in there? I did not find that in the minutes. You found it? If it's in the minutes, that's great. I, I, remember, I remember reading it somewhere. Oh, good. Yes, okay. it's on near the top of page two. It okay, thank you. I did not about see whiteboard that. programs. Um, I had uh, anybody else? I don't want to jump in too fast. Anybody else have any comments? I just had a few details. It's mostly name related. Um, I thought it would be helpful to have uh, Christians. Um, uh, role clearly identified, and now Anna's, um, just to distinguish them from members of the committee. And uh, for last month, I think we should take off Tracy because I believe she had resigned as of that time. Um, still on the name theme, on uh, the second page under guest speakers, Jesse Dean's name is spelled J-E-S-S-Y-E, -S -S -E, and the last name is D-E-A-N-E. -E. And I thought it'd be good to put Mary Chicone's uh, full name on there as well. It's C-H-I-C-O-I-N-E. Um, and on the first page, I just wanted to um, 
uh, mentioned when I talked about taking the uh, train uh, and uh, uh, how, how much I enjoyed it. it. It certainly would have been much more enjoyable than driving, but actually what I said uh, was it was um, much more enjoyable than traveling by bus. So because a, a leg, a certain leg was by bus and it was awful. <laughs> so, <laughs> minor you, thing, but try Thank to be you. accurate. Sure. Uh, if there are no other comments on the minutes, seeing none, all committee members in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody uh, saying Aye. no? Anybody abstaining? I see one abstention. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is priorities convo continues. Hannah, you're leading us on this. In this Thank convo. You. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and I don't even know that uh, I need the full 20 minutes because the main thing I wanted to do um, was sort of check in on this because I, I don't feel like in the last couple of meetings we had sort of reached a place where we knew exactly what we were doing with this spreadsheet. Um, so uh, that was the question kind of is what are we doing with this spreadsheet? Um, I think it's really helpful to have. I feel like we've gotten to a place um, where there's been a lot of input, um, but then I felt like it it had gotten set aside a little bit um, around uh, in favor of some other things. So I just wanted to leave room for a conversation and not let it sort of fall by the wayside again. Nancy. Yeah, my understanding was that the next step was to try to prioritize. And there was this conversation, MJ said, gee, be great if we could you put some dots on it, but we're, that's a whole hard, which is, which is where the white boy board idea oh, okay. came so that we could yeah. do something like putting dots on things. <laughs> All right. Well, I can definitely share then. Um, I looked into the whiteboards a little bit in Zoom. They're very straightforward, um, similar to a screen share, except my understanding is that once you bring it up onto the screen and um, Christian has disappeared, everything is blurry, but he might be able to back me up also. Um, I think once you put it up on the screen, it is accessible and editable by everyone. That's my understanding. Um, so this is not my Zoom tonight, so I can't kind of just show everyone, um, but maybe when Christian pops back on, um, he might be able to, to show us. Um, but it's there are different um, sort of templates that you can use and post-its are sort of one of those. Um, so, Christian. Um, Christian, I don't know if you had a chance to play with whiteboards at all on Zoom. I was just saying that I had looked at it a little bit, but I hadn't tried it in real time. Um, and, but my understanding of it is that if you um, are utilizing it while in a meeting, it's, I think, editable by everyone. And so that might be something that we could do um, with the priorities. And then I, I know we also on the agenda tonight are talking about, um, and I don't wanna jump too much, but I know we're talking about our meetings and if they are going to remain fully virtual. And so just to put that out there as well, that maybe this, if they don't remain fully virtual, maybe that's something that we talk about doing in person is some uh, hands-on post-editing, which MJ knows is one of my favorite things as well. So, um, uh, Christian, are you, are we on Zoom right now or are we on WebEx? We're on Zoom, right? We're on Zoom. Um, Is I it? Able, I can see if I can load up a blank whiteboard. Okay. Can... Even just yeah. to see, because I haven't really, I haven't played with it. I've only like watched some YouTube videos about it and such, but it, it's um, very straightforward. Um, yeah. The suspense is very exciting. Um, it gave me an error. Okay. Um, I wonder if we have to, I wonder if it's something that we have to like set up ahead of time the way when like you don't set up a meeting in a certain way, you can't access certain things. All that to say, 
if the next step felt like something in real time of, around prioritizing, I thought we had prioritized a little bit with the, that was the numbering thing. Um, but if the next step of that feels like sort of further discussion on that, um, maybe we table it in favor of an, of an interactive activity, either virtual or otherwise. Um, was that everyone's understanding that we were at a place of kind of diving a little bit deeper with an activity of some kind around this? Okay, okay. Um, Do you want to hear if anyone else has thoughts on this topic? Anna? Definitely. <laughs> okay. Yes. Any thoughts about activity or otherwise? Phil, yeah, please. Like yeah, I, um, I think it might be worth if we're going to do a whiteboard or you know an in-house putting dots on things. Uh, we might want to redo the spreadsheet in a way that invites putting dots on it, right? Um, you know, with a with a format where you, you have a an item and then space for dots. Uh, right now, there's a lot of extra mm -hmm. um, commentary. Uh, posts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'm, if this is something that we think we want to sort of devote some real time to maybe next meeting, um, I'm happy to, or if anyone else would like to come up with a format, either virtual or otherwise, again, I feel like that is pending a little bit because that's also on our agenda to talk about. Um, I'm wondering if Nancy table has her hand. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Nancy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like it, one of the things that we were talking about is really focusing on it and trying to figure out um, what, where SGIC can best use its time yeah. and, and its effort. So for, I, I looked at the table uh, again with that eye, and there were like a list of things that were of great importance to me, but didn't mm -hmm. feel like SGIC could make a difference. Uh, you know, that maybe it's going to be, uh, you know, an NGO or some, someone else is going to need to pick that up and move forward. So I, yeah. I think it'd be really helpful. It would help us really focus going forward um, where, what kind of, you know, who we might want to invite to speak, um, mm -hmm. where we want to either hold a meeting or make a, a statement or, you know, that sort of level of, or support certain efforts in a mm -hmm. way that would uh, enable them to, you know, that need um, some leadership or some statement of, you know, this is really important and we care about this and we're trying to get this to move forward as a, as a committee. It's, yeah. you know, it's a master plan thing that we had and we, you know, move it forward. Yeah. Jonah. Yeah, a couple of quick thoughts that I have. I, I agree completely with Nancy. Um, I think whatever planning we have for the next phase, it would be helpful to have a, some discussion uh, to understand some of these a little bit better before we're putting dots on them. Um, what, one to maybe to hear some of those thoughts like Nancy was saying of which might be appropriate or inappropriate or less successful for this community to take on, but also some, I know I need a better understanding of a little bit of context and history of mm. what what we've done before and you know what what we could do differently or so anyway I think a little discussion would be a helpful part. The other unrelated comment I noticed on the spreadsheet. In column A, it has a one through four number system. And then on the there's an attachment that you sent, Hannah, with your email that had a different number system. I don't know, are we planning to use that? I, the only, this number system should be the only one. There's only one spreadsheet, so they should be the same. Nancy, did you have I something? I found that confusing as well, but when I looked at it really closely, the other numbering system, refers to the CPC. 
Oh, uh, that, oh, yes, okay. sorry. There is another rubric attached to the same email, yes. yes. Okay, great, yes. thanks. Thanks, Nancy. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so a little more context sounds like would also be very helpful around this. Okay. Anything else before we kind of tee up for our next meeting to take a deeper dive? Anything else that would be helpful either to include in that conversation or that we haven't really talked about yet? Okay. Uh, Nancy, if we have, if there's time allocated and we're not, you know, for this topic, um, we could get started on looking at the, and talking about the the items on the list if we wanted to, so that we'd be um, better prepared to move forward next time. But that's up to you guys. Um. George, how much time do we have remaining on this particular item? I know I allocated a lot of time because I didn't know exactly what we were doing. Yeah, we're at uh, about 20 or so past and, and we had 40 minutes allocated for the first three items. So we were and this is in good third. shape if we want to take like 15 minutes or something like that. So. Okay. Um, yeah. Do we, um, what feels like the most organized way to, to dive in, but not too deep? Are there specific things, are, are there specific things that are standing out to anyone um, as uh, maybe we could start with context of a few things, if there are things that people are really noticing on top, Phil? Uh, I think it would help if we had the spreadsheet on the screen, if someone could share. Oh. And then, sure. and then maybe we could just start from the top uh, sure. and see where um, we get. Christian, is that something that you could throw up there for, uh, for us? It was attached to the email uh, with the agenda. Hannah, I think you can share it too. I think you're listed as a co-chair. Am I a host? Your status. You're a co-host. You are a co-host. Well, I am. Oh, 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 okay. Hang on one second then. Sorry. Yeah, Christian's sort of opening up the CPA meeting also. Great. So, so he's I didn't realize I was a co-host. That changes <laughs> everything. Um, okay. Here we go. Yes. Yes. Uh, so great. That was so easy. Can we make it bigger? Let's see. Can I make it bigger. Yes. We'll Did that make it bigger? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Awesome. 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 Um, so to recap quickly, the numbers that are on here, I think, are from two meetings ago, I think we talked about things. Um, and we just sort of were going through and talking about things that felt like they were already underway, um, things that need attention. My memory is that that was um, somewhat connected to our attention, but not necessarily. Um, things that were a future idea or need, as in not something that could be addressed right away. Um, by us or, or anyone for different reasons. Um, and then four were things that were connected to another item on the spreadsheet and, or another, um, uh, I think it was another item on the spreadsheet. I should have written that more clearly. Um, so as we go through and give a little more context to things, I think I agree with Nancy as well that it also might be helpful to start thinking about what do we feel is really in our purview, in, under our, in our ability, um, as we're thinking about kind of needing attention or um, kind of something we want to get around to. Um, is it helpful if the person who put the item on there gives context or asks if something needs context? 
Perhaps um, if people who have questions about it, uh, okay. maybe if they could ask, you know, what's their question? Like, I want more information about this or, oh, I totally get that or whatever. Okay. Um, I have a question about the first one, reduce yeah. loss of development. Um, Nancy, I, I see you put that there. It, uh, I, um, and George, you know about this, but if there's a specific zoning change that that this committee could agree on, um, George is in a good position to to put it forward. Uh, did you have something in mind? Um, well, I, I it's a big issue for me, and I see Carol Collins added this idea of that it for her it's a big issue, and that there needs to be townwide education and buy-in to whatever happens. So th this seems like a, absolutely a fabulous SGIC thing. You know, it's it's in the master plan. Um, you know, we could bring in a speaker if we chose to do that, which I think is a fabulous idea. Um, Carol, do you want to say some more about that? Just that I agree wholeheartedly with everything you just said, that it's a it's a matter of there's a number of ways to to look at this that other communities have done very successful examples and getting some education on it so that we can act as a resource, I would say, or or at least help educate the public and or any entities with options that do fit into the master plan. I see that as being a great role for this committee. I'll, I'll call on myself for a second to um, say that as far as uh, one thing that has happened with some recent uh, zoning changes is to allow multifamily uh, in more uh, areas by right. Uh, but there had also been there's a lot of people where an effort, uh, a pretty ambitious um, effort by a couple of uh, counselors uh, about two years ago, I think, to do some pretty drastic uh, changes um, around lot size and you know, density, increasing density. Uh, and uh, that um, didn't uh, uh, persist. And there were some... Um, indication it would be explored further. And I, I don't know if that's become somewhat dormant, that uh, exploration of it. I haven't heard much about it. And when we on the planning board, we're talking about um, things for this coming year that what didn't rise to, it, it didn't come up for discussion. So uh, people, I think know what I'm referring to who were around at that time, but uh, um, uh, about those pr a proposal that was pretty pretty uh, uh, drastic as far as the degree of change that would be involved. And that ties into also the education, I think, component of this kind of a thing. Carol, do you wanna say some more about uh, form-based codes as opposed to the kind of codes we have now? I mean, that's huge, the, the topic, but is that something you'd like uh, discussed? Well, I saw Phil had his hand up, so I don't know if, if he oh, has- sorry, I couldn't questions. see that. Well, I'd, lo I'd, uh, I'd love to hear about, about that other way of looking at zoning. I was just gonna share that there, were, there was a lot of pushback in my neighborhood to, the, uh, to that proposal. Um, and it, 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 uh, and, and the re my recent experience, or our recent experience with the uh, rezoning of the French King Highway, uh, I guess taught me that you really do need community buy-in uh, on this. In fact, you need uh, council buy-in and education. Uh, the 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 level the level of ignorance is uh, is scary, uh, and I I don't know how to do it. Uh, but if the if if this committee could ha had a proposal for a zoning change that it wanted to do, uh, and and could could have a public presentation uh, on it and and discussion. Um, I mean, we, we there is a procedure for doing that within the. A planning board, but it's it's hard to get people to come. Um, 
I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have any great ideas about this. I just wanted to share that. I would like to hear about uh, Carol's uh, other theory, other approach. Well, I guess it's up to everyone. I know that this is on further down in the agenda, but it's just as easy to roll it in now if that's acceptable. Uh, I'll, I don't know how long, maybe five, 10 minutes, but um, is that okay? Or I'll start and you can stop me. Um, yeah. But Hannah, what, do you have a... Yeah, sorry. No, I, I think that's great. I think this is why we're digging in sure. personally. Great. Thanks. So I guess I, I, I've seen this play out over and over again, and, and the lack of education, I think, is the biggest challenge that we have to, to moving forward. And um, so, but the, the struggle is to find education that, that fits the bill. I, I'm interested in learning the nuts and bolts, but that's definitely not what the public wants or other maybe committees or the council. But I did look into this afternoon, I spent some time and, and did some calling around. There are groups, one that hits me is there's a, the New England Council for New Urbanism and there's pluses and minuses with them, but overall that's something we could cater, but they do do education for the public to teach about different techniques that can achieve the neighborhoods we want. Asking Johnny Q public how to make a great neighborhood that takes years and years to study. So people know what they like. They know when they go somewhere, what appeals to them. That's why they pick where they go on vacations. And, and those are elements that, you know, you can find out from people and help to, to design what it is you want. One of the things, and I don't know about the zoning from a few years ago, whether, but one thing that I've loved for years is the, it's called pocket neighborhoods where it's a square footage per lot instead of, um, a minimum lot size per property so you can make smaller homes and have higher densities and everywhere it's been done everything pre-sells people are happy it's the way people want to live it was started by Ross Chapin out in the Pacific Northwest still to this day he's been doing them for like 15 years there's never any properties available they did it in Concord it sold out pre-sold they're adding on another uh, whole development to it and they're not cheap homes either. These are like beautiful homes. So there's the all of that. But but just again, watching these different models that that work really well, that just you don't know it unless you're kind of steeped in it. And so I think when we talk later about the education piece, maybe doing something that's more general topic, but all under the umbrella, which I think suits the master plan again really well of some ways that other communities have had successes that might be applicable to, to Greenfield that are all within that kind of sustainability umbrella that is now becoming, by the way, I'm just gonna add this on. I know I've mentioned it before, but the world is exploding and it's, it's finally happening. It should have happened decades ago, but in terms of sustainability, resilience, the Climate Act, all the money coming with the Inflation Reduction Act, my head's spinning. We have a new building code. We have Thing, you know, it's just really transportation. Every single thing is in play and being rethought and restructured. And, and so it's, it's going to take a lot of work, but I think there's different roles for different people. And, and education is, is, I think, one of the most uh, important roles that we could play so that poor Phil isn't sitting in planning me, whatever that city council me, I couldn't do it. And I made it through like five and a half hours. And I was like, oh my God. So anyway, thank you for doing that. And I don't know how last night went, but um, who, anyway. I, thank, I just, you. thank you. Oh, sorry. Can I, can I interrupt, uh, Kara? What was the, the name of that uh, approach to city planning that you said was successful in Concord? So it's called Pocket Neighborhoods. Okay. Thank you. And Ross Chapin Architects started it around 2005, and it was basically a way to do infill development in neighborhoods. So they just took a vacant lot, and it might have been an acre, and then put like a, a large number of homes on it. And they're all these very high end cottage homes. They're gorgeous. I've looked at the plans a million times. But anyway, there's a there's a vast wealth of information on that. Thank you. MJ, I saw your electronic hand raised. 
Thank you. Um, I think I just put something in the chat, which is a new tool that Mass Housing Partnership just uh, released. It's called Residency. And you can actually map the density. It, it's, it's fascinating. You hop on, you can actually take a look at the density in different neighborhoods down to the mm -hmm. parcel level size. And you can go right to Greenfield and look at your own parcel of property there. But it does some really interesting calculations. Um, so it looks like it's a great tool to help people better understand density mm -hmm. and what that really means. And what the me what an accurate measurement is of it in your in any particular location. <clears throat> MJ, can you load it in again? I don't think it came through. All right. At least for me, it didn't come through. There it is. There okay. we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Quick question. Carol, you know, yeah. Is it based on what is currently zoned for that lot? It's, like, based, they... it's based on current uh, assessor's records about what's really there, not what's zoned. Okay. But it's an interesting way to be able to do maybe start doing a build out analysis of what what could we build because it's literally parcel by parcel and has the the uh, the square footage of every parcel in it. And in terms of education, there's a lot of groups that are already meeting and talking about housing in the valley. You know, we've got uh, housing Greenfield. We've got the small town working group. Um, we should figure out how we can connect to them and if we want to do education, how they, how we can help them be, um, do more outreach in terms of the education of the types of things that we think would be helpful in Greenfield. Mm -hmm. And I'll add that this is the kind of discussion because we, yeah. um, whenever anyone on the planning board is on another committee, we report back um to the the board and uh so i can share that this discussion we had a pretty lively discussion about this uh topic so for mm -hmm. some brainstorming or consideration mm -hmm. uh just uh time check hannah we're yeah. close to the is 40 there... minute mark um yeah depending on how much time we want... use to the other items yeah um i before we leave this item, yeah, I, I think we've got a setup for a very interesting public uh, conversation that perhaps the planning board and SGIC could host, to which we invite the groups that uh, MJ is talking about and, and the experts that Carol has. And, um, you know, we, we need a, a good, sexy way to promote it, but... Uh, I think it could be really useful if we can get people to come to it. Um, anyway, before we leave, I think this is a what, good what's more appealing than zoning? Come on, <laughs> <laughs> Carol, you had your hand up. Well, I, I just wanted to add to that in terms of making it sexy. That I was kind of impressed that, at least with the Congress for New Urbanism, this is a service that they provide. So I think with the right amount of money, they'll do all of the outreach and press and sexying mm -hmm. up and they'll cater it to to what we think people would want to hear or or attend so i don't know what that number is so i i can look into that more mj is your electronic hand up again or still up <laughs> thanks <laughs> um okay so in an effort to wrap up this agenda item, I feel like I have a pretty good sense of what a helpful next step might be. So I would propose that um, a, a pretty significant focal point of our February meeting be looking at the priorities list um, through a lens of where we feel this committee can be the most helpful and start to break some things out into uh, kind of the categories that Nancy sort of offhandedly said, guest speakers, things that we want to make public comment on or look out to make public comment on if they come up, and things that we would really like to coalesce or organize some public meetings around, either in partnership with other groups or, you know, bringing in a larger speaker to town. Um, 
and kind of break out the priorities that way. And while doing that, give context and some history uh, to some of those items. Does that sound like a good next step to utilize this info? Anything I'm missing? Uh, speakers, speakers, gatherings, statements, there might be one or two other things that would end up being a bucket, but. And, and that certainly is a good segue to the next agenda item, which is about guest speakers and discussion yes. about public meeting idea. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so if that sounds good, I'm gonna just make myself a note really quickly to have the February agenda kind of focus on that to some extent. Okay. Um, oh, that is the next, oh, cause I had to leave early. So I put them back to back. Um, yes, guest speaker ideation um, and public meetings. So we could kind of just dive into this right now. Um, I had one quick update um, was that Jesse Dean, um, it works better for her to come in March. Um, so I didn't know I was gonna offer that to her. Um, and the only other person I had on um, our list outstanding from before was Mary Chacon to come and talk, but then form-based code and nature-based solutions were two topics that we had said we wanted to find a guest speaker on. And I didn't know if people already had ideas of folks that we might reach out to and sort of tee up for future meetings. Um, that could include February, or we could use February's meeting to talk more in depth about this. Um, we also have another 20 minutes now, I guess, if we want to keep talking about it. Um, Nancy, I see your hand up. Yeah, I, I, um, well, I, I sort of an update on Mary Chick when she's gone for two months, she just left on a two month uh, trip. Okay. Um, the other thing is, I think we, I'd really like to see us have time to delve into this uh, chart okay. and decide what it is that we want to do, like the form-based code, nature-based solutions. Both of those things kind of tie into the topic that we mm -hmm. were just talking about. And um, I don't know if you can uninvite Jesse, but <laughs> I guess. For March. Um, Oh, yeah, well, I'm just wondering, you know, what is it that she is going to bring to us that mm. is helpful for us to move forward on what it is our work is? So just put that out there. Yeah. So I, I'll respond to that. I think um, I had originally suggested her because she's the new head of the um, uh, Chamber. Franklin County Chamber. Um, and we, at the time when I suggested it, we were talking really heavily about downtown, about tourism, about bikeability between downtown and old Deerfield. Um, and so it seemed like an opportunity to kind of hear from her some of her vision for how Greenfield is developing, who's moving here, who's opening businesses here, what are we focusing on? It was kind of that side of things, which um, uh, I, have had an opportunity to hear from her a bit already in sort of my day job. And it just was really helpful to kind of get a whole perspective on her, um, her vision and also what she's hearing from other um, stakeholders that she is now the sort of point person for. So um, I think, especially if um, we wanna kind of keep focusing on this topic um, and our priority list in February, and then hear from her in March and kind of pick our speaker series back up. Maybe we hear from Mary in April when she's back. Um, that would give us a whole meeting next time to take a deeper dive and come up with a more robust list and plan for some other ways to approach some of these priorities. That would be my feeling. We could certainly uh, put her off further. Um, Th thank you, that's really helpful. Yeah. Any other? Thoughts? Yeah, Jonah. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I agree with Nancy that I, I, I like the idea of us working on that prioritization and then coming up with more guest speakers following that. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, you know, I wasn't at the last couple of meetings, but seeing nature-based solutions on there also makes me wonder, um, 
there's probably some topics that are that don't need to be guest speakers that could be some of us on the committee that could uh, help inform mm -hmm. the committee a little bit more I, i've given community presentations on nature based solutions and green infrastructure and you know that'd be happy to to do something basic um, but i'm sure there are other topics too that we could pull on just from the resources of our team absolutely very true anybody else comments on um before there? before we move off of jesse dean um so we had already invited her in december um and then our meeting schedule got kind of crazy um and then i invited her for january um didn't hear back from her um and so I saw her at the Amherst Chamber annual lunch yesterday and she and I talked in person and she was like, I could come in March. And I was like, I think that would be great. So I can uninvite her <laughs> um, or we can have her come in March. So are there feelings about that? Cause I, I don't mind to say to her, we've kind of gotten off on another topic. Could we delay a little bit or if it's okay to keep her in March, it sounds like that works for her and we could utilize February and then beyond to keep going with the priorities. But I do think I will say that downtown is on our priorities list and was a high priority according to folks on the committee. Feel Anybody have any thoughts, reactions? I agree that downtown should be on our list. <laughs> I'd like to hear from Jesse Dean. And I'm struggling. I can't remember how to spell her name. Can you tell me again, George? Yes. Yeah, it's uh, J E S S Y E. The second J E S S Y E, yep. And then and Dean with an E at the end, like Jonah's name with it. Got it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's on the agenda that's on the screen, Phil. Okay. Well, I've but got I didn't tell Mary to come, so don't follow that spelling. <laughs> and I'll I'll offer. I think it would be good. I, I agree with the, you know, kind of the continuous uh, focus on downtown. And I think having, uh, I mean, her purview includes Greenfield downtown, but it's a little bit broader as well. So it'd be interesting to hear uh, that perspective. I think. Okay. Uh, Nancy, is your hand up again or still up? It's up again. Sorry. I'm Please. No, no go ahead. Things. Um, I have a question maybe for Carol. Um, is If we're going to do a public meeting at some point, it would be fabulous to do it before it's summer, like when everybody kind of disappears. So um, here we are. It's like we're already talking March and then April, May. So if we did want to do something, if we decided the next meeting that we wanted to do something um, around educating people about um, success, successful other options, successful options, how long do you think it would take? You know, could we pull it together? Do you think we could possibly pull it off in April or May or what's reasonable? You mean the actual public meeting? I guess I am saying that it seems fast, but um, yeah. but if we wait till summer, I don't know. Well, I, I can't really add more to my plate right now. And I was trying to reach out to one of the people. I can try to get some basic facts, but then it's always a fair amount of work getting, unless we pay money, which there is no budget. But um, so I think all of those discussions would need to be had to kind of figure out a timeline. The more money there is, the shorter the timeline can be. But there is no money right now. So I, you know, maybe fall is nice and cool too and everyone's back. I don't know. But um, yeah, like I said, I can look into it. And I love Jonah's uh, offer to work on the nature-based solutions possibly. So maybe, yeah. I, you know, I, I found another mass resource with the nature conservancy that looked really great sarah burns i believe who i'm sure you're familiar with um so uh yeah it's just a matter of figuring out what we want to do and then figuring out the timeline so i have a follow-up on that uh, is uh, it would be great carol if you could could just find out you know what would it cost to bring someone here and what kind of time frame just so that we know that 
And then, but I hear you saying that, you, you know, that you might have time for that, but you don't have time for actually doing the, you know. Yeah, I, I really don't have time for any of it, but I just, I'm very passionate about it. So I just keep working and then it's very late. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll see what I can round up. But I, I would say that what I really, what really appealed to me that I think would be most appealing to the neighborhood or, or the community. So I'd love to get maybe a quick pulse of, um, I think something generalized that addresses kind of a lot of different things to achieve a solution. So not going a deep dive into the weeds on this type of zoning or this, maybe it addresses form-based codes as a kind of an overview, but um, just um, getting people to understand maybe the terminology and options and, and, and does that seem like a good direction to go in to start? I'm, I'm interested in, in success stories, what you were talking about before. Yeah. I think that's what will get people motivated and excited. And I'm curious about other uh -huh. people in this committee, what they want. Agreed. Anybody else have a reaction? Success stories are great. Stories are great. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I thought I was off mute, but I, I will plan to bring back something next month, before next month with some thoughts and numbers or next steps. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Carol I, I, I just wanna offer Carol an uh, opinion that um, I really appreciate over the years, how much you put your, both the passion you put into this, as you noted, but also you do so much research on this stuff and you bring forward so many different uh, resources. It's, it's mm -hmm. really uh, impressive and much appreciated. Well, thank mm -hmm. you very much. I, I, I can't help myself it seems and I wish I could get a sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just keep on keeping on. Other people read books. I'm like, oh, I gotta read about this new town center. So, um, Hannah, do you uh, think we have what we need, or do you want to wrap I up this? I think so. No, okay. I think so. Yeah. And nobody else has a parting comment on this topic? Looking for hands, either actual or electronic. <laughs> Not <seen. laughs> um, Okay. Just, just to summarize, if I could. So yeah. uh, we are going to go with the Chamber of Commerce for March and on... Um, uh, but and next month we're going to dive, do a deep deeper dive into the spreadsheet, and we may have time to do some more spreadsheet work in March as well. Yeah. Yes. I, th I think. Yeah. For anyone, I I can't I remember mean, if we've had a a guest speaker since we've had folks join the committee. Um, but usually what we do is the speaker talks for about thirty minutes, and then we have about. 30 minutes for questions and comments and such, and that leaves 30 minutes for our business stuff. Um, and sometimes it doesn't take that long and usually it does. Okay, should we go on to the uh, meeting format topic? Um, so I'm, I can lead on this um, and uh, if whoever, Hannah, it might be good um, to take down, unless other people need it, the uh, oh, yeah. screen share yeah, so yeah. we can see more of each other. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and I do have to leave a little early. So if I wave and leave, that's why. Okay, thanks. Uh, so at Hannah's delegation, I did contact the mayor's office uh, today to get an update about um, preference because I remember at one point a few months ago we'd heard there was a preference not to flip-flop from you know virtual to in person that kind of thing so I spoke I had a long conversation with Caitlin von Schmidt the administrative assistant to the mayor and she said actually the the preference is now to do hybrid meetings um, and to expand on that a bit more uh, she said the hybrid system actually works pretty easily at town hall 
as it's tougher at the John's on. She was saying, I'm kind of surprised because, you know, uh, it's a newer facility, but um, for some reason it, it is more manageable there. And the other uh, factor is that pre-COVID, there was, there was some option for remote participation, but it had to be an in-person quorum. And then other, you know, people could participate remotely only with very limited um, uh, rationale or, you know, reason for that. Um, there are now uh, COVID guidelines in place for hybrid meetings that you only have to have one member of the committee actually present. Um, and it's still a legal um, legal meeting, as long as you have a quorum between in-person and virtual. Uh, those, Caitlin was saying, those um, guidelines are currently in effect into March, uh, and they may be extended, uh, but it's not known at this point. So that's kind of the uh, lay of land as far as options and um, as I say, the uh, preference expressed by the mayor's office was to do hybrid meetings, so at least some of us would be in person. Hannah. Um, the guidelines that are in place until March, is that both that only one person needs to be present in person, or is it the preference for hybrid altogether? Yeah. Do you know? So, so it's. It, I don't think it said that only one, I mean, you don't need to have a in-person quorum which were the pre-COVID um, guidelines. Um, so oh, that's what, what runs out in March and might be re-looked at. Right. So if that's it were to revert right. to the pre-COVID guidelines, you could still do... Well, I, I don't know what it would be. Because again, from the point of... I mean, there's the question of both participation of members of the committee as well as members of the public. Obviously, hybrid allows for members of the public to participate whatever the requirements are for committee members. Um, but currently the requirements for committee members are much more flexible because we don't have to have an in-person quorum and you don't have to have, I think there were five um, uh, acceptable reasons to participate remotely pre-COVID. Now maybe, you know, with all the technology that's happened and the experience of remote meetings, maybe that will, you know, change permanently, who knows? But at this point, uh, it's very flexible up through March as far as uh, committee members being able to participate remotely. Phil. Um, so I, I've um, had some experience with uh, hybrid both in John's on and George, you and I were at the uh, city hall room. Th that's a very nice facility. Uh, my experience is that you get a lot more public participation uh, with hybrid. Uh, we, last at the, last night was it last night's meeting? Yes, we we had a, a dozens of people at John's on and ninety nine people online. Wow. Uh, so to get one hundred and thirty or forty people at a meeting, um, that's a pretty good use of technology. And um, anyway, so I'm I'm a enthusiast. Of hybrid, <laughs> and and I'll just say I was just doing the presentation, but I would I would love to get back to in person meetings, and I think that having the hybrid uh, option is a real, I mean it's it's a benefit for uh, some committee members who have various you know factors, but uh, particularly it allows, as you're saying, Phil, for much more uh, public uh, live not just watching a recording, but live participation and uh, presence. Anybody else have a thought or an opinion? Yes, MJ. Yeah, I think the, I like the hybrid. I've used the, the one at the second floor meeting room at City Hall and it works really well. Um, you know, we're always trying to balance, you know, making the meetings as accessible and sharing as much information as we can but the realities of people's busy life, childcare demands, or, you know, just where you end up. And, and I think it behooves us to try to find a way to make this new technology work well for us as we try to have the level of civic engagement that we'd like to see. I'll throw out that one uh, consideration is uh, booking the space. And I know that when I, um, 
I, I think the CPC, which overlaps for an hour with our meeting, I think they use that uh, town hall meeting space. Um, I think they're meeting right now and I'm guessing they're at that location. So that's just something to throw out there. I don't yeah, know if anyone else knows. <laughs> We're an older committee than they are. So we get first. <laughs> well, Christian, you would know, are they in the town hall meeting space? Yeah, I'm actually in the room next door right now. They're over there. <laughs> okay. I feel like they meet the John Zahn Center quite a bit too, right? Wait, what mm -hmm. about John Zahn? They, they were doing most of their meetings over at the John Zahn Center. Yeah, but that was before they were doing hybrid. John Zahn uh, hybrid is John Zahn hybrid is uh, a lot to work with compared to City Hall. So, uh, so that's a, a factor mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I think we can work it out with the CP CPC. We just we just you know we both landed on what the fourth Thursdays of the month, and. Yes. They were a new committee and they were had some pretty a pretty rigorous meeting schedule to get themselves up and running. I don't I don't know what their ongoing meeting schedule will look like once they make recommendations. Maybe we can ask Christian about that. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, yes. May I suggest that we book that meeting room for next month? <laughs> get a uh, get a ahead of this. Uh, I think the CPC is actually talking at their meeting uh, that it's going to be, they're using it that night for their public hearing. Or maybe they're using John's on for the public hearing. I'm not sure, but I can sort it out with them. That'd be great. Thank you, Christian. Yeah, I do Kim, think did I see, oh. you're expecting a large crowd of people that you've got to move over to John's on because the, the second floor meeting room has limited capacity in terms of who can be in that room. Uh, yeah, I think it was the fourth Thursday was going to be their public hearing at John's on. So some other days oh. they're going to be using it. But the fourth Thursday, I think it would be free for, for you guys, at least for the next month, if they okay. if they end up doing that. How do we book it? Um, it's just I have to use our city Zoom account connected to the room. There's some stuff behind the scenes, but it's really just a couple of clicks as long as I know the date. Kim, I couldn't tell if you were raising your hand or just giving a thumbs up about meeting Meeting there. Kim, could you hear me? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, just a thumbs up. I was up. giving you a, a thumbs up on it. Um, okay. I feel more comfortable communicating in person myself. So yeah. um, I'm much more in favor of getting together in person. And, and at this point, the hybrid option allows, you know, uh committee members to you know participate remotely um because i know there had been issues sometimes about scheduling you know if someone's work schedule is such that it's harder to it's easier to get on at five o'clock than to actually arrive at five o'clock so should i ask anna is there any objection to starting to do hybrid meetings as of next month no objection here no it's Seeing none. Looks like we'll try to get that, and and we'll try to play nice with the uh, CPC. How <laughs> to manage that too? Okay. Um, can you go ahead and book that for us if you can? Yeah. So I actually have both booked right now for the CPC. Um, so they're they're going to end up using John Zond though. So I can just swap that over to to you guys for the city hall. Great. Thank Are they you. allowed to do that? You can't just book every room. <laughs> they, they, no one else has argued with me about having both booked just in case. So, <laughs> yeah, I think Hannah, there you... are a few people who have access to the schedule who know it, Christian. You're in a special place. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, did you want to talk with Travis about uh, kind of negotiating or sorting that out going beyond February? Or... Sure. Is that the best way? I'm happy to. I um I don't know uh, if anybody else has it. Just, just seemed. Um, I think if we want more public participation, an arm wrestling match might be the ticket. I so would win. It's the room. <laughs> 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 um, yes, I'm happy to reach out to him and just kind of see what their upcoming plans are. 
Okay. Uh, sounds like we can move on. Next item is Downtown Alliance Public Meeting Recap. MJ. I sort of did that uh, quickly at the beginning. Um, do folks want a more involved one? The recap is is that um, you know we did the meeting last week. We did the have you you've all seen the the four four pages of poster poster board, correct? Yeah, those got updated. There's some new ch there's a couple changes on them. Um, just to flag those, uh, there are, hang on for a second. Um, there is, uh, okay. The updates are is that the Greenfield Community College Downtown Center got sold to a new person and we've been in and toured it. I've been in and toured it with him the other day and um, not really sure what it's gonna be used for, but there's some uh, conversations going on about uh, some good possibilities. Uh, the other piece to update is that uh, the Court Square redevelopment, we decided we're going to start design development this summer. Uh, that should be happening sometime starting up late summer and uh, go through the fall. Um, the First National Bank building, we issued the RFP last fall and those proposals will be due. We decided to extend to the end of April to give folks time to put together a proposal on that. And um, I'll, I'll share with you that I know that over the past year, there's been a lot of conversations about what's gonna happen to the Hope Street parking lot when the temporary fire station um, evacuates from that site. Uh, and we've been encouraging folks to, sh to share their thinking about that in the context as we're doing the downtown revitalization plan update. I'll also share with you that that's a, 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 very, a very specific issue that we're looking at as we do the parking management study. And we won't have the result of that uh, till June, uh, but they, the consultants who are working on the parking uh, management study are really taking a look at supply and demand and usage and management of the parking resources that we have. Uh, we have not heard any updates in terms of how the armory building might be used. We know that there's a new owner there, but we have not We've reached out to him, but haven't heard back from him. And also the web building on Hope Street changed hands. And hmm. we've been in touch with the new owner there who at the moment is going to hold hold fast for the existing tenants while they make some plans about what a possible future is. We're also which, working which building, on- Which building on Hope Street? Which, Second, building on, which building on Hope Street? It's called the web building. It's- Oh, I know it. Yeah. It's sold? Yep. Yeah, it's sold. Good for- the new owner is a, a philosophy professor who lives in Northampton and teaches in uh, teaches in Westchester uh, County, New York. So we can uh, think about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but sorry. Which, is the web building the one that's over by the anyway, can you do you mind just saying where exactly it is? I'm not sure. sure. It's on Hope Street. You go down Hope Street past the armory. Uh, yep. and it's right before um, the uh, Don Moran's dancing studio that's in the church. So, is it where in a vintage place is? Yes, in a vintage yes. Place located. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that would be a great renovation. Right. And the other things that are happening is Mass Housing Partnership is working with us and two property owners in downtown uh, Greenfield to explore um, upper level residential development, specifically uh, Tim Grader and some of his properties. And we're also talking with Isaac Mass about what's happening on the second floor of the Garden Cinema. Well, Carol. I'm sorry, I just have a quick question on the upper store development. It's basically looking at what's already existing. It's not looking at adding stories to single story buildings, right? That is one of the topics of conversation that we're having. We're talking about exploring doing that. Okay, thank you. Any other thoughts or questions about MJ's update? I'll also share with you that we're gonna be closing off Port Square again. Uh, that'll close up at the end of April for summer, uh, summer pedestrian fun. And, um, and we're looking to do programming on it pretty actively. We've, we're talking with some, some potential food trucks, although we're trying to sort out 
uh, we'll be talking about uh, how food trucks work there, given that we have, you know, some downtown restaurants that we have to be mindful of also. And there's now unanimous public buy-in to that okay. concept. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I will share with you that we got plenty of um, uh, angry feedback the first year. Uh, the second year, we got some more, you know, a little more feedback. I'll share with you this past year, it felt very um, non-controversial. At least none of the controversy was reaching my ears. I think that we really made a good effort to try to listen to what people were saying and, and tweak it a little. Um, I, I'm sure as we move towards the, you know, the design, this summer and, and into the fall that there'll be some conversations. But you know, quite honestly, a lot of the a lot of the conversations we were having were concerning some parking issues and access issues. And I think yeah. we're sorting through a lot of that. We got a lot of feedback that people really enjoy that public space. Mm -hmm. Third, we're gonna have to do something oh and you should be aware of this that uh, we have a new kiosk that will be going in on the corner. Uh, and uh, we have 200 amp electrical service uh, that we're putting into the town common. So that'll make it a much more flexible and accessible space for a variety of uses. So we're pretty excited about that. And from the point of view of, um, you know, people's reaction to things and then, you know, it's, it's uh, to Carol's joke, it's not just about what people think about things a lot of times it's about emotional reactions and we all all have emotional reactions to change and uh so it's it's uh yeah it's a uh, it's a pretty complex and nuanced process uh to bring forward uh changes and, and new ideas and stuff so yeah reminder to be sensitive about all that <laughs> yeah any last thoughts or questions for mj carol do you know where the funding's coming from for the court square design? Is that a grant or? Um, for the design, it's going to be in our CDBG application for street. It's under streetscape improvements for a community development block grant. Oh, okay. Cool. So no cost. Well, it'll cost something. It's just we were a mini entitlement community. And you're all welcome to stay. And I encourage you to at least stay long enough to sign in to the public hearing at 630. <laughs> so you can offer your comments on uh, on, on what we're going to be um, seeking funding for. But, you know, I was we're, say, that was a, we're that really was a good segue on for an, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. MJ. No, just that, you, you know, there's been a lot of focus on the downtown. Um, you know, we've talked about it. We talked about it for a long time in the context of the sustainable greenfield. And you know now we're now we're trying to move things into implementation, and it's nice to be able to you know tap into the uh, CDBG funds for that. While we, while we are still a slum and blight downtown, we're a slum and blight district in our downtown, which gives us more flexibility in how we use our block grant money. Careful, careful how much you clean it up. <laughs> no kidding. I mean, we've got until, you know, until January 2026, the slum blight designated. So we get whatever we're going to do with block grant money, we got to get it done because uh, I think it's looking pretty, I think downtown's looking pretty sweet nowadays, quite honestly. <laughs> I, yeah. And did I mention that I, uh, before Christmas, I walked down the, oh God, <laughs> one side of main street and every every storefront was filled um uh, that's a change <laughs> yeah yeah if we applied to be a vacant storefront district now we wouldn't get we wouldn't be designated we we have really have very few vacancies and right. i'll share with you that that's been one of our challenges you know as we've been talking about the wilson store and the need to relocate some of the existing storefronts there is there's some options but we're pretty full up so I guess we're okay to move on to that was one MJ about the CDBG uh, hearing happening after technically this meeting adjourns. Uh, I guess it's posted for six thirty, so you it have is to for six thirty. So I do have technically to wait. wait till then to open it up. But uh, you'd you'd love to have some of us hang around for that. I would love to have because you guys do sir. Well, you know what? We can do our update to you, and then you don't have to. We'll do the update last on the public hearing, and then you don't have to listen to it. 
Because we did, uh, and I should sort of introduce Anna. She's um, my new community development administrator. She's going to be doing the, you know, the Sustainable Greenfield Implementation Committee serves as our um, Citizens Advisory Board for the block grant. Uh, so on a quarterly basis, we've given you updates, which is sort of on the same schedule that we do quarterly reports to uh, DHCD. Um, that said, uh, did I did I write the quarterly update or did you write it, Anna? The update we sent to them? Yes. You, you wrote that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So I wrote it. Um, that's right. And uh, I read so, it. <laughs> so I can, um, I can, re you, you all got it. And I'm happy to either review it or, or to answer any questions that you might have on any, any one of the projects that are listed on there. And, and this is a bit of a change because before we had had this uh, public time in within the body of the uh, SGIC meeting. Right. And now we're having it just um, uh, at the end, technically, as far as the hearing itself. So, right, because this is actually something I will also review with the folks who attend the public hearing. But if you, uh, you don't, and it's on the, le it's the last thing on the agenda for the public hearing. So I'm happy to do a review with you since you're my advisory committee and, or you can, stick around and we can go through it at the public hearing. I didn't, I thought we'd be a longer meeting time today talking about the priorities. Right, right. Um, so uh, do, I do have another announcement to make, but I, I wanted to see and some others might have them as well, but do people want to hear any updates or should we go through the announcements first just to make sure we cover those? I'll just quickly mention that uh, I, when I spoke to the uh, mayor's office today, I was also asking about the filling of the vacant seat on this committee and found out that indeed Mary Chacon is being, her name is being put forward. And uh, so it will come before the council at their February meeting. And so uh, probably uh, assuming it goes through smoothly would be joining the committee in March. Uh, also, uh, Caitlin at the mayor's office said that there was another person who had their name forward and um, uh, she was going to just send their information along to Hannah and myself as chair and vice chair, but uh, for if we have another opening, but uh, Mary is going forward. And I know she had been waiting for a while for that, put her name in quite a while ago. So I just want to make sure everybody knew that. Are there other announcements people had to make? Yeah. I don't know if yes, it made so. the. I don't know if it made the paper, but there a solution did was put forward for the policing issue. Uh, did, do you know what happened? Should I report on that? Yeah. The um, uh, the mayor and the police chief came up with a plan where there are ten hour shifts uh, to fill up all but three hours. For, um, from three to seven, yeah. All, uh, so the, the, we will have policing in Greenfield uh, all for 24 hours minus three. And for those three hours from 7 a.m., uh, from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m., they're counting on the state police. Uh, it's better than where we were the previous week. Uh, and there was some suggestion that maybe we should have one officer on duty for those, one Greenfield officer on duty for those three hours. But um, <clears throat> It was a, a, a much more productive meeting than the previous week. And it'll be in the paper tomorrow, I guess. Right. And that goes into effect on March 1st. So it's not happening. Uh, next right. No, nothing's changing until March 1st. Uh, yeah. And they came up with some money to, to pay for it. Right. Thank you. For Thank you for that update. Uh, Kim. Question. Um, MJ, what is the link to sign into the, uh, the meeting? You're in it. <laughs> right. the same, it's the same link. Over? All yep. you have okay. to do is sit tight. <laughs> okay. You can actually see people are joining right now. Oh, nice. Are there any other announcements people have? Oh, Peg, Peg corrects me. This, that's four hours from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. <laughs> well, you know, it's Winter Carnival next weekend, right? Okay. 
Are we going to have snow? We'll, ha well, we'll at least have chunks of ice that they'll carve on Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then we'll, we'll also have Bee Fest in the middle of May. So I'm, I'm just rattling through the, uh, the things that I know are happening in Greenfield this year. Green River, the Green River Festival will be at the fair again in late June. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll have another, um, we'll have the shuttle back and forth between the fairgrounds in downtown, which worked really well last year. Did, did we have free parking in on Main Street for Christmas? Yes. The you know, I, I got a notification about that because I'm a counselor, but I didn't see any publicity. I saw people putting money in those meters. Uh, if we're going to do it, we should let let people know. Uh, I, I come. I think of it because there was free parking in the uh, garage for the festival last year. Yeah. So no other announcements. So we we're at six twenty two. I feel like. Someone should give us a topic and we can talk amongst can ourselves. Talk amongst ourselves. <laughs> uh, we could welcome the people who are coming online for the next meeting. I have to sign off. I can't stick around for that that next one. Hope you feel better, Jonah. Okay. Thank Thanks you. For being yeah. here, Jonah. I feel better. Bye-bye. Take care, Jonah. And me too. I'm going to hop off. Thank you, everyone. Do we have a motion actually to adjourn the SGIC meeting? So moved. That's Nancy. Second. 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 Okay. Thank you, Phil. Uh, all in favor, committee members, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? All right. So we, we're in a in a, a a twilight zone interim between <laughs> the SGIC meeting and the official opening of the. CBG. CDBG. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sherry. <laughs> First sign up to, to finish my notes here. Thank you all. Thanks, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, we can go ahead and, and let up everybody in and just as folks are coming and just share with them that we're just waiting. This is the tail end of the, the this is the leftovers from the Sustainable Greenfield Implementation Committee that just met. And we'll be starting convening the public hearing at 630 on the nose. And George, you guys were great to host the um, the downtown meeting last Thursday. Thank you. I really appreciated that. Oh, yeah, it was great. Thanks. So, Phil, I appreciate you noting the uh, the public input was helpful to do do the math. Well, I know Phil is gone, but it's four hours from three to seven. <laughs>